What's up guys, Flaming Geek here. Uh, I'm starting a new series on my channel <laughs> where I'm hopefully gonna post more content regarding about Japan and Jet. So this is gonna be part of a Jet series for all you 2019 arrivals who are set to come to Japan at the end of this month, uh, which is super, super exciting. But this is also for all you future applicants who successfully make it through the application process. So to kick it off this video, it's for all you last minute packers, how to pack for the JET program. Today marks two years since I started, like when I officially started packing before my departure day to come to Japan. My departure day, I was in group B. Um, this was July 30th of 2017 and my last day at work was July 15th, 2017. So that left me with basically 13 days to pack because two of those days it's just meetings and stuff and ceremonies uh, so I thought I would just give you guys a rundown what to pack and for all you people in the future who are watching this and want to start packing early good for you good strategy you can pack uh, two weeks prior to arriving to Japan it all ultimately depends on what type of pack packer you are what country you're coming from some countries do have a limit on how much weight uh, per suitcase you can bring for example my friends from South Africa who arrived before a like, couple years before I did, they were only allowed one suitcase, one carry-on. Whereas mm, us Canadians we were fortunate in being allowed two suitcases, one carry-on. So this plan, uh, my packing strategy is mainly gonna be revolved around if you're allowed two suitcases, one carry-on, how to pack. <laughs> My biggest advice would be to first pack, uh, make your checklist of all of your important documents. So passport, yakin shome, um, any original documents you need. If you are having to file your taxes while you're in Japan, and if you have to file them by yourself, then I would say bring some of your tax documents. Social security number, make sure you have your SIM card for your phone, visa, and such. Okay, now let's get to the nitty gritty down of packing. I'm gonna put a list up on here or either in the description down below. I think I'm gonna put it in the description down below. Um, basically how I categorized my packing. In one suitcase, I kind of just allocated that to omiyage. I brought a lot of omiyage. For those of you who don't know, uh, Japan is very much a gift giving culture. It's not expected that you bring uh, gifts, little gifts, um, for your schools when you arrive, but I would recommend it. It's a, it's a nice gesture to show them, um, especially when you meet your contracting organization, your board of education or prefectural board of education. It's something nice to give and it makes you stand out and yeah, because everyone knew who I was. <laughs> at the time I arrived. I gave everyone um, maple candies and fudge and you know, lots of Canadian goodness, little flags and Canadian pins. But that is the subject for another video. So one suitcase was my omiyage and my other suitcase was my hygiene and clothing. Uh, like I said before, I do advise packing, at least being packed a week before your departure because then you have more time to relax and chill with family members. Uh, me, unfortunately, I decided in the last two weeks to cram my time with my friends. Plus, I had to do like, I had jet obligations to do, and um, I had to pack. Sorry. And I had to pack, so I was insanely busy. And if you're unfortunate like me and your parents want you to pack all of your stuff up, like they're not even allowing you to keep your room. <laughs> Uh, then you're gonna have to pack and make sure everything's put away to be put in storage or whatnot. Uh, I, but most of my friends were lucky that their parents allowed them to keep their place. Now, let's get down to the actual nitty gritty. I know I've upset that. So, in main suitcase number one, I would advise having your hygiene and your clothing allocated for that suitcase. So in terms of hygiene, uh, if you need face wash, ibuprofen, face lotion, razors, toothbrush, toothpaste, like, you know, all the essentials, deodorant, ladies, if you need tampons, tampads, get all of that, hair materials. Uh, if you're someone like me who has a very different type of hair that's not 
Asian hair or Caucasian hair where you cannot really get a lot of mainstream brands if you need hair relaxer or any other like black hair products then I would advise bringing some of those with you you can also get your family to ship some to you but I would advise bringing some I brought um, like a three month supply worth worth it uh, worth of stuff and then uh, you can use Amazon to Amazon Japan to buy some stuff yes Contact lens, in this case, I would also say bring contact lenses and if you need backup glasses, have those in and uh, medication if you're carrying uh, just some over-the-counter medication that are authorized to come into the country, you can put them in there. So I put my um, extra Advils in. And toothpaste, I highly recommend stocking up on toothpaste and deodorant, deodorant slash antiperspirant. If you are a firm user of antiperspirant, I recommend you bring a year's supply worth of antiperspirant. Uh, antiperspirant here is expensive. Uh, Japanese people tend to wear deodorant or they don't wear anything at all. And you know, everyone's body is different and they sweat different. I sweat like a pig as you can clearly see right now and require that 24 hour, 48 hour degree antiperspirant sports uh, edition. So I, sports version. So I brought a lot of that and I brought a lot of toothpaste um, because I like the Crest whitening toothpaste. Here, toothpaste isn't very good. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it, but to each their own. Next suitcase, the next part, suitcase, clothing. This is a lot of, I get a lot of questions on what to bring for clothing. Okay, so I would say for the first thing to prioritize in clothing is make sure you have some formal wear. And I would just advise bringing what you wore to your interview, if it was formal. Ladies, that means like a skirt slash dress pants and a dress shirt and one blazer. I had someone tell me you should bring two blazers. And I would say if you're in a high school, if you're a prefectural, so high school, I would advise bringing two blazers. But if you're elementary, junior high school, you don't really need to wear a blazer every day. Sorry. You don't really need to wear a blazer every day. Um, I think I just wear a blazer whenever it's an important ceremony, which is like five times a year. And I went and packed seven blazers. Yeah, they're all different colors, but I've only worn like two of those. <laughs> So I would say just bring two or one blazer and you're going to be good. Same thing goes for guys. Um, clothing is important because if you are above the average height here in Japan, if you're a very tall guy, tall girl or lady, and if you're bigger, if you're big boned or just bigger set, uh, they might not be able to find some sizes available for you. Same goes for shoes. Um, I personally wear like, for shoes I tend to purchase guy sh male shoes here because uh, my shoe size is, fluctuates between 25.5 centimeters to uh, 26.5 centimeters here, which is like going into male territory there. You can order shoes online. Yeah, there's the internet. Bring any exercise clothing if you need it. If you are like me and you have you have boobs <laughs> and you need that high com uh, high contact like sports bra, I would advise buying them in your home country because Japan doesn't really have bras that are like high physical contact. I'm thinking like rugby bras and stuff. Um, you know, and if you have bigger boobs, <laughs> they will have an abundance of A and B cup, but if you're C and up, uh, it might be a little difficult for you to find stuff that have the adequate support. So take that into account. Underwear, uh, make sure you bring casual clothes. So depending on where you're going, if you're going to Hokkaido, um, you might want to also have some winter gear with you. If you're in Kyushu, like where I am, I literally, if you're from Canada, if you just wear like a fall jacket, that will be fine for the entire winter. It's just like fall here. It's not really winter. Whereas if you're in Hokkaido or Tohoku where it, it, you're going to be getting snow, then yeah, take that into account. You can always purchase that here. I, winter gear isn't that expensive. 
and you'll be fine. So don't worry about it. Or you can get family if they're really nice to send it to you. Bring rain gear. There's rainy season, which is right now in Japan, which is like several weeks of nonstop rain. So bring rain gear, um, sandals, seasonal clothes, indoor shoes for your schools. You can have one pair of indoor shoes and bring it to all your different schools. Or you can buy a pair of shoes for each of your schools. That also depends on like if you know what schools you're at by now. Um, but I just bought, I brought one pair of indoor shoes which were runners and then the longer I was here I just went and bought some more shoes. Teachers here for indoor shoes, if you're in elementary and junior high school, you can get away with wearing Crocs or sandals. I wear Birkenstocks and socks and that's perfect. I know a lot of teachers who wear Crocs. And that's fine. But if you're in high school, you're probably going to be expected to dress a little bit more formal. And that's where you might have to actually wear like dress shoes, dress, uh, uh, dress shoes, and dress pants and dress shirts and stuff. If you're planning on getting some swimming done, then bring a bathing suit. You'll be good. All right. I think that's it. Next, carry-on items. So for carry-on, I put in all my makeup into my carry-on bag because uh, I was worried it would get broken. And when you're packing, just take into consideration that whatever is in your carry-on bag, that is coming with you to Tokyo. That is coming with you to the hotel in Tokyo. Whereas your actual uh, large suitcases, that will be shipped to your contracting organization, your city. That's where it will arrive. It will arrive at the airport there or the... Um, your BOE will pick it up. Do not do this as there's always one person every single year who puts all of their clothes and everything important into their large suitcase and it gets shipped. Then they arrive at the hotel in Tokyo and realize, wah, wah, they don't have anything and they're rushing to the konbini and buying like konbini clothes, which you can get convenience store like clothes that you can wear and spending their first bit of time in Japan panicking and trying to find clothes that fit them. So make sure you organize appropriately. In your carry-on, I would advise putting in one set, one set of your formal wear into the carry-on for Tokyo orientation. Because for Tokyo orientation, it's two days and you are expected to dress formal for that. So put in, uh, put in one set of formal clothing and I, I just brought like my dress pants and dress shoes and blazer and I brought two different blouses to switch out for, for the days. Bring your contact lens, solution contact lens that you will need immediately, glasses, um, sunglasses. I advise bringing a sweat towel. Bring one of these, these will be really handy. As soon as you land in Tokyo and you step out of that plane, you're gonna feel the humidity. You are gonna be arriving in Japan at the end of July, early August, and it's gonna be freaking hot. So bring that, uh, bring your laptop, makeup, money, bring your money. Uh, headphones, iPod, iPhone, or any type of phone you're bringing. Bring your chargers with you. Bring your camera, your, if you have an instrument, that will have to be brought with you as well, classified as a carry-on. Bring your pencil cases, passport cases, any writing material that you will need for Tokyo orientation. Um, if you need a hard drive for your laptop, bring that as well. Water bottle, I advise packing, just pack an empty water bottle into your carry-on and then whenever you're in the airport past security check, just fill up your water, bo water bottle like that. Trust me, you will need it when you're at Tokyo orientation. Uh, if you need blankets for your flight, then you can bring like a small little blanket or if you have a favorite blanket you like to travel with, bring that as well. And earplugs for the flight, gum, any uh, flight nausea medication that you will need, hand sanitizer, and bring all of your immediate medications that you require. Anything that has, that is prescription medication that might need to be checked by customs when you come in, bring it with your yakin shomei and present your yakin shomei paper. Um, chances are you might not get checked because you're traveling with a group. I wasn't checked because I was traveling with a huge group and there I was like going up to security with my yakin shomei and my passport and I was like, you want to see my yakin shomei paper? I spent a lot of time and money getting this ready. 
but it's fine. Just, I would make sure you have those prescription medications. Um, I will link in the description down below um, the rules in regards to bringing medication into Japan. Uh, if it's over the counter, make sure it's a month supply and make sure it doesn't have coding in, coding, coding in, coding in, <laughs> coding, yeah, coding in, in it. And sorry for pronouncing my accent because uh, that is banned in Japan. Make sure it doesn't have any banned substance. If you're bringing prescription medication, make sure you're not bringing any opioids in um, as well. And it's a month supply always and make sure that has been cleared and approved by the Yakin Shomen. I think that's basically it. I think I covered most of it. Ultimately, I would advise these last two weeks if you need to get dental work done or any of that jazz like get it done also if you have any dental appliances or any internal appliances that you need to be maintained make sure you account for that as well uh yeah don't stress too much about packing like so many clothes i would say like i i think i packed 10 t-shirts like fun t-shirts and pajamas and one set of pajamas, I got, yeah, I just brought a summer set of pajamas and then I purchased my winter pajamas here. There are clothing stores that cater to bigger sizes, like Shimamura here. Um, if you need like more business clothes, kind of, you can go to Uniqlo. However, Uniqlo, the sizing, yeah, if you are plus size, it's gonna be, you're, you're gonna have a hard time uh, at Uniqlo, but there's still options there. There's Amazon, you can still use, um, you can purchase outfits on the internet and stuff. All right, I hope that answered all of your questions. I'm gonna leave the lit, uh, the, the list my list down in the description below i'm not sure if i'm going to write it or if i'm going to have it in a google doc you'll find out in the description down below so feel free to check that uh, I hope that answered all of your questions, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna try to have a weekly video. <laughs> I am going on vacation soon. I'm finally going back to Canada after two years. I'll be back for a month. So um, it depends all on how fast I can edit these videos. So I have a video every week for a while I'm gone. For those of you coming to Japan, good luck with your packing. Um, you can do it. it. Don't be afraid to ask for help with packing. Don't be like me and think you have to do all the packing by yourself because that's what I did. I packed all by myself, packed my room up and everything. And that was incredibly stressful. Um, ultimately, just think of in terms of clothing, don't overpack on clothes. Like you can buy stuff here. Uh, and don't overpack too much on omiyage. Be smart and selective with your omiyage. I will have a video for omiyage coming out soon. And yes, so let me know what you thought about this video down the comments down below. I hope it was helpful for, t for you. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, live long and prosper.